imagine that you're sick of a situation and you support those who vow to make a change but then those who you previously supported they make the situation even worse and what do you do exactly you rebel against your former ally in this video i'm going to talk about the kronstadt rebellion the moment when the kronstadt sailors rebelled against lenin and the bolsheviks Hey, welcome back here regular viewers. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a history teacher and I'm hustling history on location this time for you. Please consider subscribing, also hit the notification bell to become part of the hustle. Let's start. Okay, Kronstadt is a fortress and a naval base that is located outside of St. Petersburg and was built on the orders of Tsar Peter the Great in the early 1700s on the island of Kotlin. Its function was to protect the former capital of Russia. At the eve of the Russian Revolution, around 50,000 Kronstadt sailors were stationed here on this island. Already from the beginning of the Russian Revolution, Kronstadt was a rebel stronghold. The February Revolution here was fairly bloody because the Kronstadt sailors, they rebelled against their officers and Admiral Viren was bayoneted to death. Other officers were imprisoned or killed. So who were these Kronstadt sailors? Well, most of them were fairly young, below the age of 23. Many of them were influenced by extreme left-wing ideals. The Bolsheviks recruited many Kronstadt sailors, but not all Kronstadt sailors were Bolsheviks. Some were anarchists and others were socialist revolutionaries. Now, I'm not gonna dive into the different left-wing ideals that were around in that time. If you have any additions, feel free to leave a comment down below. An interesting quote from Orlando Fages, a people's tragedy about these Kronstadt sailors. In 1917, Trotsky had called the Kronstadt sailors the pride and glory of the Russian Revolution. They were the first to call for Soviet power and they played a key role in the events of October. Yet, Kronstadt has always been a troublesome bastion of revolution maximalism. Its sailors were anarchists as much as Bolsheviks and what they really wanted was an independent Kronstadt Soviet Republic, a sort of island version of the Paris Commune as opposed to a centralized state. A rebel stronghold as you will. Already from the get-go, the Kronstadt sailors rejected any orders from the Russian provisional government that was established after the February Revolution and they helped the Bolsheviks gain power in October. Now during the Russian Civil War the Bolsheviks were fighting on many different fronts against many opponents. They were fighting against the white armies, they were fighting against the elite intervention force, they were fighting against nationalist movements and they were fighting against left wing rebellions. Some anarchist sources claim that the left-wing rebellions that occurred between 1918 and 1921 can be considered a third Russian revolution. So why did the Kronstadt sailors rebel against the Bolsheviks? Understand here that in 1921 the Bolsheviks were on the winning side of the Russian Civil War. The white armies were defeated. They had either fled from Crimea, the armies from Denikin and Wrangel or others were captured and executed like the fate of Admiral Kolchak. Yet the Bolsheviks they had to deal with a whole string of peasant revolts. They implemented a policy called war communism where they basically confiscated all the food of the farmers and as a result of this extreme poverty and famine struck. The Kronstadt sailors who were on leave in their home villages they were shocked by the horrifying result of the Bolsheviks, not to mention the terror that they had implemented on the civilian population. Now these Kronstadt sailors, they weren't anti-Bolshevik per se. Some of the Kronstadt sailors, as mentioned before, were Bolsheviks, but they always had these democratic ideals and their democratic ideals were already outlawed by the Bolshevik government in 1918 and thus they decided to revolt. Now the Bolsheviks here, they didn't want to sit this one out. Okay, it was March 1921. The ice between the Kronstadt Island and the mainland where Petrograd was located was still thick enough to launch an offensive. Waiting for the thaw to set in would mean that the island and the mainland would become separate and then the Kronstadt fortress would become an impenetrable bastion. So, Leon Trotsky ordered the Kronstadt sailors to surrender or to die. And to die it was. 
Kronstadt was first subjected to an artillery bombardment and then on the 7th of March 1921 the Red Army launched its offensive across the ice. Thousands of Red Army troops were sent towards the fortress and behind them there were Cheka machine gunners to make sure nobody would retreat. It became a massacre. The Red Army soldiers, they advanced across the ice. They were then met by heavy machine gun fire by the Kronstadt sailors and were mowed down by the masters. Other troops disappeared in the holes of the ice that were created by the enemy fire. The sailors, they had won the first battle, but not the war. During the following days, Kronstadt was subjected to artillery bombardments as well as aerial bombardments. And then 50,000 crack troops made their crossing across the ice and they managed to get food ashore on this island and what followed was heavy and savage street fighting in these streets. House to house fighting occurred. But then on the 17th of March, the Kronstadt sailors had to surrender and those who surrendered were arrested and shortly after that, executed. Around 8,000 soldiers, they made it out alive. They just threw away their weapons and they run towards neutral Finland where they were interned. Now some of them later returned to the Soviet Union when they were promised amnesty. Only this was a lie. As soon as they set foot in their homeland, they were arrested and often exiled to the Sovleski camp where many of them would die. Now Finland, as I mentioned, was experiencing its own civil war around the time. If you want to know more about that civil war, you check out this video that I shot on location in Helsinki. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon because with your donations I can travel to cool places like this and shoot cool videos like this. Do not forget to subscribe. Until next time.